that is larger than life. It is called... Texas High School Football. Only one show can bring the greatest sport from the greatest state into focus. Lone Star Gridiron. Here today with Coach Cody Day of the Elkhart Elks. How you doing today, Coach? I'm doing well. Thank you for having me. You're welcome. Now, you you haven't been there very long, but still you've got to see your kids compete in some sports. You've got to see them in the, in the weight room. So how are things going so far? It's going well so far. Uh, this is day 12 for me, so I hadn't been here very long. Um, took the first few days to just kind of observe them in the weight room and in the period and see how see how they look in terms of work ethic and, and how they interact with their coaches and how they interact with each other and all that. And I was very impressed. They worked extremely hard, a lot of intensity in the weight room. Um, when we've done uh, some football stuff during the period since then, uh, they've been extremely positive um, and really kind of embracing, you know, maybe some new terminology and, and some things that are different. So I've been – unbelievably impressed with uh, their attitude and their work ethic and just can't say enough positive things about them. So um, not going to ask you to name specific names because you probably haven't been able to memorize it, but you're a football coach. I'm sure you've looked at some, some uh, huddle film of the team from last year and you've talked to the coaches that are, that are still there. So what are you going to have back for the fall? What might look a little bit different in the fall? What are you going to look like on the field? Sure. Um, we actually bring a lot back, back uh, in terms of personnel. So we'll bring back just under 20 starters. Um, you know, we, they were a pretty young uh, team last year. Um, and so we're excited to have those guys back. In terms of differences, um, you know, we're going to do a lot of things that are similar offensively. Um, you know, there may be some footwork changes, uh, you know, some blocking rules changes, those types of things, maybe how we block some screens, whatever it may be. Uh, but there, th there's going to be some similarity schematically offensively. Uh, the biggest difference is going to be defensively up front. So so we're going from uh, from an even to an odd front. Um, and so that will be a little new for the kids. Um, uh, but, you know, we're excited about what we have coming back and uh, the work ethic that we've seen. And again, you know, they've completely embraced uh, everything, you know, in these few days that we've been there. Um, seven on seven, we've had two of those so far. They've looked really, really good. Uh, we had one yesterday. Uh, they threw the ball well. They covered pretty well. Uh, they're communicating well. So, so we're excited. All right. Now, you, you talked about going from a, um, even front to an odd front on defense. Of course, that changes the personnel that are going to be filled. Now you have more linebackers and less linemen. But how big of an impact does that have on the assignments of the players on the field and the reads that they have to make? Sure. Well, I mean, fits will be different for sure. Um, you know, we're going to have certain jobs for defensive linemen that uh, may be similar to what they were doing, but may be significantly different as well. Um and so, really, we're, you know, our, we're going to rely on our defensive line to help keep our backers free so we can run to the football. You know, just kind of based on our personnel, we have uh, a significantly higher uh, backer, safety, corner type personnel than we do uh, defensive linemen. And so uh, that's one reason kind of for the uh, schematic change defensively. Um, there's no doubt that it'll be a little bit different. Um, you know, there are similarities coverage wise. Uh, but the good thing about being in that 3-4 is, you know, we can easily go from an odd to what looks like an even, um, depending on what the offense gives us with our outside linebacker and roll a safety down and play cover three or whatever it may be. So it is it is a little different, uh, but I love the 3-4 because it's so multiple. And uh, to me, it's a lot easier to adjust, especially at the smaller school level. You see so many different things. You know, a lot of times at 6A level, hey, you may see spread or pro-I pretty much – the whole year, that's all you see. You know, we may see slot T. The next week, we may see somebody that's going to throw it 75% of the time. So you've got to be able to adjust and uh, and uh, kind of fit, you know, what the offense is giving you. All right. Now, if you don't mind, 
kind of walk us through your district. Um, you know, who are the teams in the district? What you uh, what you know about them so far, and what you expect to see from them on the field as well. Sure, uh, it'll be very competitive. We've got some travel in our district now. You know, we've got one one opponent that's about thirty minutes away, and then outside of that, everyone's over a hundred miles. And so, uh, you know, we're, we're going to be on the bus a good bit. But uh, Lexington, uh, they've got some tradition uh, toward the top of the district. Rogers as well. Um, Clifton will be in there. They had a strong showing in track, so uh, so they can run at the moment. Uh, Buffalo's very scrappy and they're tough as well. And uh, and then you have Florence as well in the district. So um, we've got our work cut out for us. Um, but, you know, based on kind of some things that we've seen on film and what we have coming back and, and again, the way the kids have worked, uh, we're excited about the possibilities in district for sure. And let's back out and go real big picture. You, you've you been around Texas high school athletics for, for a good while, um, been at several different smaller schools. What would you say the biggest challenge facing – high school athletics in Texas right now is? Well, uh, I would say one, um, you know, there's kind of a, uh, uh, I would say kind of a, a cultural issue in terms of um, maybe what's portrayed in media sometimes, especially with more physical sports like football, um, that is almost discouraging to parents and to uh, athletes when in reality, especially given so many new rules, I mean, the game, for example, in football is, is safer than it's ever been. I mean, you know, we, we basically completely changed the way we tackle. We can't even have our head involved pretty much anymore. But, you know, a lot of times, you you know, all you see is a head issues, head injuries, those types of things. When in reality, um, you know, those are kind of lower than they've ever been, you know, in terms of number percentage wise. So, um, I think that's something. Um, also, you know, I, I think one thing that's awesome about smaller smaller communities is sometimes you have a little different value system, and so it, uh, it kind of lends itself to maybe a little uh, a little a little tougher uh, mentality, a little bit. You know, you may have to to be you know working in the woods or whatever it may be, and so I think that helps the smaller school a little bit. But in terms of uh, Biggest problem ath athletically overall for the state of Texas, I really do believe, uh, you know, that, that that the media kind of puts some things sometimes in, in front of people that's not necessarily completely within context in terms of safety for athletes. Now, you, you're still getting settled in there at Elkhart, but you've been at a couple of smaller com schools, smaller communities prior to this. Talk a little bit about that, that how important – the school is to a community, to a very small community like the ones you've been at in Elkar. Sure. Well, I mean, it's really the lifeblood of the communities, really. Um, I mean, and that that's that's what's so important about kind of athletics to me. Athletics is really kind of the front porch of the school because when when somebody goes to to uh, to a to a school to to watch an event, you know, hey, that where they're going to be most of the time. Is it the football stadium or the baseball stadium, the softball stadium, or the gym, or whatever it may be? And so, uh, I mean, it's 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 kind of a, it's kind of a unique environment, especially in small schools. Um, you know, the thing is, everybody kind of knows everybody as well. I mean, a lot a lot of times, you know, I know you have kids move in and move out and those types of things, but a lot of times, hey, the, the kids that you went to school with as fifth or sixth graders, for the most part, it's the same ones you're going to graduate with. And I think you can form some special bonds there, uh, not just with those kids, but with the parents and the community as a whole. And, uh, you know, I kind of I think, you know, a lot of times communities kind of see themselves as, you know, helping to to raise uh, to raise kids as well. So it, it's very unique. I think it's I think it's something that's special. All right. So let, let's go from big picture, bring it down to small picture, try and learn a little bit more about Cody Day. What would you say your number one guilty pleasure is? Okay, so if you would have asked me this a couple a year or so ago, it would have been different. But so in Coleman Hill, we didn't have a lot of uh, eateries. We might we we had a couple, I guess you would say. Um, the problem is now there's a Chick Fil A about five miles away, and that's going to be a problem for me. <laughs> and I've already told my wife she's going to have to she's going to have to lay down the law. Hey, you can only go to Chick Fil A once a week or whatever it may be. So. 
So I've been deprived of Chick-fil-A for several years, so that may be an issue for me. All right, Coach. Well, thank you very much for your time today. Best of luck as you wrap up the school year and head into the uh, 23 season. Thank you so much. and appreciate everything that you do, Tony. And for our viewers, if you like this video, click the like button down below. It really helps with the algorithm on YouTube and getting this video in front of more eyes. Also, if you, if you like what we've been doing with these uh, interviews, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification button, and then you'll be notified every time that uh, we post a new video. LoneStarGridiron.com. Access the complete history of Texas high school football, over 100 years of information, win-loss records, coaching histories, individual stats, records, and more. Lone Star Gridiron, the authority on Texas high school football.